Are you unable to get a free 60 day trial of Microsoft Fabric? In this video we'll see how you can get a free 30 day trial instead. Hello, I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Now Microsoft Fabric and Power BI offer a 60 day free trial. First of all, you need a work email address. And I've got a separate video on how to get a work email address if you haven't already got one. So I've created a new work email address and I've signed up to Fabric Free. And here you can see I'm in the Fabric portal. Now I'm going to go to my profile and I'm going to click Start Fabric Trial. So request a 60 day trial to try a fabric capacity. And after clicking Activate, you'll see I have access to the Power BI features for the next 60 days, but not a free Microsoft Fabric trial capacity due to an error. Now, the first time I tried this, it said that the free trial was activated. However, as you can see, it hasn't been. And if I try to create a new workspace and go to the advanced, you'll see that I'm not able to create a new trial or a Fabric capacity workspace. All I can do is use a workspace which is associated with Power BI, such as a Pro workspace. Now, if I click on Learn More, this takes me to a web page where it says that I should have a 60 day free trial. And there is nowhere on this page that says I can't have one because I've only just created the email account and registered for a Microsoft account. However, it appears from other places that you can't. So here, on a website called school.com, you can see that this person received an update from Microsoft on February the 6th, 2025. We have stopped supporting fabric trial capacities on newly created Entra and Microsoft 365 tenants, which many users previously set up for testing and learning. But that's not good for you if you actually want to start learning Microsoft Fabric now and not say in 90 days when you'll be able to get a free trial. So how can you get a free trial regardless of this new obstacle? Well, you can do this using Microsoft Azure. So if I Google Azure free trial and click on this link, you can see that yes, you can get popular services free for 12 months, but you can also start with $200 of Azure credit. Now you might be wondering, well, what is the point of having Microsoft Azure credit? I want to use Microsoft Fabric. Well, if I want to create a paid for version of Microsoft Fabric, I do this in Azure. And therefore we can use this $200 credit for a free Fabric capacity. Now you will have 30 days to use it. So this is why I'm saying this will get you a 30 day free trial instead of a 60. Now, if we go to the Azure pricing for Microsoft Fabric, we can see that for an F2 capacity, which is the minimum, the page you go is $262.80 per month, plus any taxes. Now you might be going, okay, but that's not 200. I can't have a 30 day free trial, even at the minimum capacity or SKU. Well, yes, you can, because you can pause your capacity. So instead of having this 24 hours a day, 30 days, which you won't be able to do, you'll probably be able to do about 24, 25 days. What you do is pause it when you're not using it and therefore your credit will not be charged. In fact, you could go for an F4 for about double the price. And then if you only use it for eight hours a day maximum, then you will still be able to have all of that within the $200 Azure credit. So let's click on start free and I'll sign up for Microsoft Azure. So I'm going to do this using my new email address that I've just created and which I'm using in Microsoft Fabric. So I'm going to check, I represent that I'm the individual identified on this account. Now notice it says no automatic charges. After your credit is over, we'll ask you if you want to continue with pay as you go and you'll only pay for any surplus. So that means you don't need to worry about Microsoft accidentally charging your debit or credit card. So let's click on next and I'm going to complete my identity verification either by phone or by card and then click on sign up. So I've entered my phone number and I've got a verification code and I'm clicking on verify code and then I'm going to verify my card. That's my card and click sign up.
Next, Microsoft is asking me to enable multi-factor authentication or MFA. So let's click on next. And then I'm going to add this account to my Microsoft Authenticator app. I'll pause the video until I'm done. Right, that's now been done. So I'll click next and done. And now I'm going to be signed into Microsoft Azure. So here you can see I'm ready to start with Microsoft Azure and I'll click on go to Azure portal. And after a few seconds, I'm here in the Microsoft Azure portal. I'll click on home to get to the home page. Next, I will add my subscription to Microsoft Fabric. So I'll type in Microsoft Fabric at the top and here you can see Microsoft Fabric. So I'll click on that and then click on one of the create buttons. So I've got my subscription. I need a new resource group. You can name it what you will. So I'm going to call it Microsoft Fabric. And you can see I can't call it Microsoft Fabric. So I'll just call it Fabric and click OK. So I need a name for this capacity. So I call it again Fabric, see if that's available, which it isn't. So let's just add some letters or numbers at the end. Choose a region near you and choose a size. Now this is very important. If we go back to the pricing structure, you can see that if the SKU doubles, then pay as you go price doubles as well. So the F64 that it is recommending at $8,409 per month, you won't have too many hours in which to use this for the $200 credit. Whereas if you use an F4 or an F2, you'll have more hours, especially if you pause it. So let's go back to Microsoft Azure and I'm going to click on change size and click on F4. So the cost is higher because it includes value added tax, a sales tax for me. And click select. And that's it. So I will now go to review and create and then create. So this is just going to take a few seconds. So now you can see that the fabric resource has been created. So I can click on go to resource and here you can see. So now it has been created. How can I use it? Well, let's go back to my fabric homepage and I'll just close out of all of these dialog box and I'm going to click refresh. And now I'm going to create a new workspace, new workspace at the bottom, and I'll call this my fabric workspace. And in advanced, I'm going to go down to fabric capacity. So I still can't do a trial because technically this is not a trial of fabric. This is a trial of Azure, but I can go down to fabric capacity. So then I can click apply and you can see here is my capacity. And here is my new workspace. And if I go into the workspace settings and go into license info, you can see that we have got a fabric capacity. Now, how can I pause this fabric capacity when I'm not using it? Well, for that, we have to go back to Microsoft Azure. So if I just start from a brand new page and type in portal.azure.com, so again, this will just take a few seconds and you might need to sign in as well. So I'm just going to cancel this get started and I'm going to click on Microsoft Fabric so I can type it again from the top bar, but I've already used it. So it is here. Click on my capacity. And here I can pause it when I don't want to use it and it will no longer be charging me for the time that it is paused. So you can see the status is pausing. It hasn't paused yet. If I refresh, still pausing, and you can see at the top, we still have something happening. We have this progress bar going across, but now you can see it has now paused. So if I tried going back into my workspace and let's say I wanted to add a notebook, you can see I'm unable to complete this action because this fabric capacity is currently paused. Now, if I unpause it, so I'll go back to this page and click on resume. Again, this will take a few seconds. And now you can see the fabric capacity has now been resumed. It is now active. If I go back into the fabric portal, click on new item in my fabric enabled workspace, add a notebook, 
you can see it has now been created. So in this video, we've had a look at how you can create a fabric capacity for 30 days, even if you're not able to do so for 60 days. Now, the next question you might have is, how can I use Microsoft Fabric? Then please go to our website, idodata.com, where if you hover over Fabric, you can see that we've got a range of courses, including the DP700 course. So in this course, we'll look at all of the requirements for the Microsoft DP700 exam, including data pipelines, manipulating data using Notebook, PySpark, and SQL, transforming data in a warehouse and an event house using KQL as well, together with other topics. And there are plenty of practice activities, quizzes, and practice tests throughout the course, so you can be sure that you are learning. To find out more, please go to idodata.com and go to Fabric DP700. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, then please give it a like, and why not subscribe and click that bell, so you'll be notified of any new videos. Would you like to know more about the Microsoft DP700 exam? If so, then please click on the video on the end screen. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Thanks for watching, and keep learning.